Hello! Do you like video games? Do you like little squares of paper with sort of sticky gum on the back and if you lick them they stick to things and if you put it on something and then write an address on it and put it in the post box it gets the address you've written on it? Well, you're gonna love video game commemorative stamps from the Royal Mail. Yes, it's finally happened. They've done a commemorative set of uh, video game stamps uh, featuring British video games from amongst the eons that games have been in existence. Yeah, um, if you're not familiar with these things, every so often the Royal Mail spews out another collectible stamp thing to make some money, presumably, and they always used to have things like, I don't know, birds or trains or buildings or famous people, not counting the Queen, on them and that kind of stuff. But uh, recently they've sort of stretched out. Um, there was a Doctor Who one a few years ago, wasn't there? I think I've got one of those in a drawer somewhere. I ordered a set for somebody and they spent me two bucks, if I recall. <laughs> oh, well, you can't expect the Royal Mail to post things properly. Anyway, yeah, that's it. These are now eight of them based on video games. Technically nine, um, as you'll see shortly. Uh, it's an interesting selection. Uh, there are some fairly obvious omissions, but I think that's for rights reasons. We'll get into that later. And yeah, I mean, if you're not familiar with it, the Royal Mail is the uh, postal service in the United Kingdom, called the Royal Mail because the Queen herself goes out every morning and makes a cup of tea and has a little chat with every male worker in the country, which is amazing, really. Hello, John. Did you see the match last night? Mm, what a shower of twats. I swear, when the match is that bad, they should just repeat one of my Christmas speeches. <laughs> anyway, regards to the missus. Ah, oh, yeah, every morning. You see, that's why people love the royal family so much. It's that personal touch they bring to things. Right, <clears throat> so they come in a very, very shiny and very camera non-friendly uh, covering there, but I'm not going to start pulling them about and all that kind of stuff. Um... Oh, they also have small bits of cardboard on them which sticks to your finger. That's fun. Those little descriptions of things. We'll look at that in a second. They always come in a nice package because that's all part of it, isn't it? So, quickly to go through, we have... Um, actually, I'm going to zoom in, I think, because that will enable us to see them in high res with less of the almighty glare. So, yeah, the second class there, we have um, Elite from 1984 uh, by David Brabham. Uh, you basically fly around and shoot at things in space from a first-person point of view and you buy things and you sell things for profit and I think there are some Thargoids hidden somewhere. I don't know, I was never into Elite. I had a copy for my Spectrum, uh, it came in a compilation, but it just never quite clicked with me. However, the sequel, uh, Frontier Elite 2 on Amiga, I got really into for a short period. Um, also, it came in an amazing pack, Elite 2, like all novellas and things. They're actually more interesting than the game, almost. But yeah, it's considered something of a super classic, especially on the uh, sort of BBC and Acorn Electron, which this is, uh, yeah, look at that, that is definitely that version, which makes sense, because that was kind of, I think it may have been the original, but it's certainly the one that uh, it's most famous for being on. Next, we're up to 1995 and Worms from Team 17. If I remember, the, the sort of basic shell of the game, um, was sort of written by a kid or something. They went round his house after he, after he invited them round to say, look at my game. They didn't just turn up unannounced at random. That would be a very strange way to run a software publishing company. Um, yeah, and really liked it and took the game on board and sort of finished it. Um, and there's been many iterations of Worms over the years, as well we know. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed Worms back in the day. Uh, I went out and bought the original version for my Amiga 1200, if I recall correctly. But I definitely do. I can remember the white box, which I may still have somewhere, actually. Um, um, yeah, it's good fun. It's one of these games that doesn't quite work in single player, but when you've got a few of you around the tell you where you go. If you've never played it, it's basically that sort of scorched earth tanks thing where you um, have different weapons and choose the um, trajectory and the power and all that to try and mess up the opponent. There's all sorts of little comedy touches here. You can drop a concrete donkey on them. Um, you've got dragon punches and uh, fireballs for Street Fighter 2 references and all sorts of gummins. It's a nice game. Next up, 1992's Central. Sensible Soccer from Sensible Sockware. Soft, sensible Sockware. That's right. They were making socks and accidentally made a video game. No, from Sensible Software. Um, Jules and Jops and Stu and all them sort of people. Um, massively, terrifyingly popular game. Absolutely beloved to this day by um, people who, well, like arcadey fun games. It's got football in it, so uh, I had about as much interest in it as I did in the Norwegian leather industry. But hey, I know it's a good thing if you like that kind Kind of stuff. I can't tell you much more really. They released several versions of it. One was quite heavily bugged if I remember. Um, yeah, 
there have then sort of update discs and all sorts of gubbins. But yeah, it's massively beloved for the gameplay to this day, as I say. Then we've got Lemmings. Man, I remember the Lemmings obsession of 1991. Actually, it's probably close to 1992 when we all had it. But uh, yeah, hell of a puzzle game. These little green head bastards. They just walk forward and die, unless you specifically tell them to do something else. Um, all, there's various different little mini powers you can give them temporarily to help them build uh, ramps, or parachute, or um, learn to play the accordion, and all the useful things like that. It's a great game. I remember being very disappointed with the data disc thing that came out. Oh no, more Lemmings! Because it really was just sort of more levels exactly the same. But then Lemmings 2 came out, the tribes, which had massive, um, had bigger graphics, or bigger sprites if I remember. But yeah, that had a uh, sort of different feel to it and a lot of diversity in it. Not sure it quite uh, matched the purity of the original Lemmings, but quality stuff. There's also Lemmings 3D. Or was it 3D Lemmings? Can't remember how they put it. That's from like Sega Saturn and PlayStation. And probably BC in the early days, which is one of those games nobody seems to like. But it's got slightly fiddly controls, but much better than people say, I feel. Anyway, that's by DMA Design, I believe, good old Lemmings. And it plays March of the Mods when it plays the intro sequence on the Amiga version. So there's a bit of useless information for you. Wipeout from 1995. Yeah, it's not F-Zero, it's the Sony one. So yeah, futuristic cars, things hover around a track at high speeds and you race and you win. And it's really good fun and very popular back in the day. Spawned uh, several sequels, Wipeout 2097 and all that kind of stuff. Um, I can't remember who made one. I think it was Psychonosis actually, wasn't it? Yes. In fact, I know it was Psygnosis, that came up with something recently. Yeah, um, Psygnosis well known for sort of various Amiga games things over the years, but really struck the gold with Wipeout. Um, can't think what happened to them actually, they probably absorbed into another group or something, but yeah. Wipeout's been pretty much dead for the last seven or eight years, I think. Uh, the last game was for the Vita, so that was a while ago. Um, I did enjoy Wipeout in uh, small doses, but I'm not a massive racing game fan, so it wasn't quite my genre. Now, Micro Machines is also kind of technically a racing game, but oh, so much fun, especially when you're sitting there in co-op and nudging your mate's joypad. Oh, well, joystick, because we had uh, still had the home computers when this blighter was out. So, I remember having a lot of fun with the Amiga version of Micro Machines. Uh, that's that's the Mega Drive version on the stamp, I think. Um, but uh, I really got into Micro Machines V3 on the PlayStation. I bought it on, like, re-release and got well into it. It's super good fun. Basically, tiny little cars, based on the toys of the same name obviously race around various in-home environments and uh, yeah when you get far enough ahead of the opponent to hit the front of the screen um, you get a point and the other one sort of explodes or is it when the one at the back gets to the back I can't remember now because we only ever played the two people anyway that was 1919 to one and what a year it was <sighs> dizzy oh man dizzy did you know that slight sacrilege here. I never liked the first Dizzy game that much. It was okay. No, Treasure Island Dizzy, the sequel. Ooh, and the third, Fantasy World Dizzy, is absolutely fucking brilliant. Absolute masterclass in game design to this day, I feel. And there were many other Dizzy games. So Dizzy there is, um, the, the, I think that's a bird above him, is it? Or a bat? Um, certainly not a frisbee or a boomerang. Anyway, yeah, Dizzy is an egg. He waves his arms in an enthusiastic manner and is quite endearing and has a very brilliantly animated uh, rolling jump and or somersault, as I suppose we'd call it in the trade. Um, nice, colourful, fun action adventure games. Pick up the items, use the items somewhere else, avoid the baddies, all that kind of stuff. And they were budget games. Mm -mm. Released by... I think they Were they released under Codemasters? I can't remember. The Oliver Twins wrote them, anyway. I've met the Oliver Twins. They are very nice. And that is, is my Oliver Twins information for you. Um, yeah, really good series of games, Dizzy. Some of the later ones went over to consoles. I think they were like an NES version, Mega Drive version, that kind of stuff. Can't fully remember. There were all sorts of spin-offs as well. Quick snacks, fast food, Dizzy down the rapids. Oh, blimey. Finally on this one, we're looking at Populous. God, I played Populous to bloody death on my Atari ST. Yes, 1989. Uh, it's a god game, arguably one of the first. You raise and lower land to flatten it out, let your people build bigger buildings, and then wage war against uh, the people who are wearing differently coloured, uh, well, I was going to say loincloths, I suppose leotards, I don't know, skins or whatever. There was kind of a, a 
I suppose you call it an expansion or something, The Promised Lands, where it changed all the graphics to Lego and weird things. And there was a really good sequel, Populous 2, which really did sort of ramp everything up. But again, there's something about the simplicity and the joy of Populous. Um, and the more the people worshipped you, the more weird powers you could bring down upon them. Like the Earthquake, which was always the most fun. Yeah, uh, designed by uh, Peter Molyneux, who is a well-known game-designing human in the British Isles. Uh, my favourite story about this is uh, Peter Molyneux himself went off to play Populous against somebody else abroad as part of like a competition and really didn't want to lose. So he's, there was like a secret cheat mode he put in, so he won. And I always thought that was... Oh, let the other guy win, Peter. Oh, dearie me. Anyway... Let's look at the rest of this thing. Zoom out. Whoop. Whoop. Too far. That'll do us. So, yeah. It comes in a nice bit of foldy, foldy cardboard. And it tells you everything about the games. Oh, including which versions they were. Ah! Should have looked that up beforehand. Now I'm going to get one wrong, aren't I? And everyone will punch me till I die. Yep. So, originally created nice for by David Brown and Ian Bell. I didn't mention Ian Bell. I do apologise. Mr. Bell. Yep. Elite is a seminal 3D space trading combat simulator in which the player travels the galaxy in search of action, adventure, and profit. That's a really nice description of Elite, actually. Well done. The brainchild of Andrew and Philip Oliver, better known as the Oliver Twins. That's less of a description of the game, but uh, it's very true nonetheless. Oh, it's the Amiga version of Populous. I must admit, I don't think I could tell um, visually between that and the ST version. Don't even know if it's possible, actually. Um, and Populous enabled head-to-head -head play via a link-up cable. That is true. Yeah, you couldn't have hot seat stuff going on there. You had to have your weird null modem cable. Oh, who remembers those? And, yeah, Lemmings. We know what's going on here. It's getting guiding the Lemmings to the clearly marked exit. Sounds simple. It is anything but. And the main thing is, when you quit a level on Lemmings and give up, all the lemmings' heads explode after they shout, Oh no! And it's really bloody funny. Take my uh, word for that. Micro Machines, a Sega Mega Drive, Joypad. I just realized they put the control method. Oh, interesting, fair enough. So, yep, that was the uh, Mega Drive version. It's fairly clear, I thought. Uh, Sensible Soccer, that was the Amiga version, which makes sense. Wipeout, PlayStation, of course, and Worms, the Amiga again. Created by Andy Davidson. Now, yeah, Worms started as a homebrewed entry for a magazine's programming contest. The game didn't win the competition, oh, I didn't know that, but was signed up by Team 17 a few months later after Davidson showed it to representatives of the long running British software publisher at a computer trade show. Oh, somebody told me it was in his, they went around his house or something. Oh, unless he had a computer trade show in his house. No, I think I was lied to. Ah, well, what a nice little set if you enjoy such things. But wait, it's not over yet. Wait for it, wait for it. There's an extra four all based on Bloody Tomb Raider for some reason. So, I mean, it makes sense to have Tomb Raider in there, obviously. Um, massively popular franchise started off. Eidos made it for the PlayStation Sega Saturn. Was there a PC version of the first one? <sighs> I don't know. It eventually came out on Engage. There's a thing. There was definitely a PC version of Tomb Raider 2 because I remember buying it. Um, yeah, I loved the first Tomb Raider. She may control like a tank, but man, at the time, this was exciting stuff. There she is, running around near a T-Rex in the top left from Tomb Raider in 1996. I've never played any of the other games, so um, I'll tell you why in a minute, actually. It's a boring story, and you'll hate me for telling you it. Um, Adventures of Lara Croft, 1998 in the top right. Tomb Raider Chronicles, 2000, where she's got like a super underwater suit thing and the reboot from 2013 good god that was seven years ago now i must get around to bloody playing it at some point crikey um yeah i really really liked the first tomb raider thoroughly enjoyed it and just as it was getting to the end and you have that kind of fight with what was her name natla um at the end the atlantean woman who's grown wings is flying around everywhere you shoot her down i remember thinking oh, do you know what getting a little bit not sick of it, getting a bit tired of this now Mm. And then you kill her and you jump down like a slidey thing at the side of a pyramid or something, and the game ended and went to the end sequence. And I thought, wow, this is the most perfectly pitched game I've ever played. Like, literally, the instant I thought, oh, I'm getting a bit tired of this, right there you are, game's over. Brilliant. Then I bought the second one the day of release, and it was just more of the same. And yeah, I was tired of it, wasn't I? So that never worked for me. But there we go. It has been an absolute. Uh, pop culture powerhouse Lara Croft um, there's been multiple films with those two Angelina Jolie ones in me and then the recent one with Alicia Vikander in which I, um, I haven't seen actually I should get around to that at some point apparently it's sort of alright um, which isn't exactly selling on it greatly but there is the original Lara Croft model when she was made out of cereal boxes slapped together with glue and painted by a child 
and there's that Midas bit. Don't jump on the hand, because you die. Uh, I don't, don't know why they've done four for Tomb Raider. Um, you'd think they could have done four other, like three other games and Tomb Raider or something. It's like an extra addendum or something, but I don't know. They really wanted to put it forward. Yeah, good old Tomb Raider. Blimey. Um, if I remember... Um, yeah, core cool design. Uh, I said Idos earlier. Was it published by Idos? Oh, that's going to annoy me. I'll flash up a graphic. I remember hearing once that, um, like, core cool design at the time only had like six people working for it. So, like, Tomb Raider was developed just by six people. It's unthinkable by today's standards for a triple A game, isn't it? Blimey, oh crikey, O'Reilly. So, there we go. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, the, the, these cost including postage and packing, £15.70. Which is a lot of money for a few bits of bloody paper with screenshots on. I'm not a massive fan of just like having printed screenshots. You can get those books, which are almost just like screenshots of retro games. Like, well, I, st I still play the games, so and you know you see them in motion and stuff. I don't really get the, oh, you like this thing? Have some stuff with it on. You know, I, w I want a little bit more to it than that. But there we are. Um, maybe if you keep them, they'll be worth a lot of money. Of course they won't because uh, everyone else is going to be keeping them as well. That's the way these collectibles always work. But it's really, really nice to see uh, British video games commemorated in some manner. Now we're going to have to, of course, whine and moan and piss and complain because of the game we wanted isn't on there. No, no seriously, there are some odd omissions. Uh, Ultimate Play the Game don't have anything in there at all. Um, they went on to become rare, of course. I mean, I'd love to see a GoldenEye stamp, but let's face it, you are never going to get the rights to use a James Bond. It needs on pretty much anything these days. And there's no real representation of the really early days of software. I mean, Manic Miner, Jet Set Willy, massive games on the spectrum at the time. Uh, Horus, of course. Uh, the problem is the rights. There's been a lot of problems with Horus recently because people are saying they've got the rights and nobody really seems to know who does. And uh, yeah, I heard there was problems with the um, Jet Set Willy, Manic Miner stuff as well, so they couldn't uh, use them because uh, nobody seems 100% sure who owns them or the people who do want something. It's all a horrible quagmire because... In the early days of video games, it was all a bit of a wild west, legally, and um, yeah, there weren't a whole lot of si um, forms signed and kept and delivered in triplicate and all that kind of stuff, and as a result, it can be very hard to work out who actually even owns the rights to this stuff, let alone who to ask if you can stick a picture from their game on a stamp. I mean, generally... <laughs> You could do the old thing of um, asking for forgiveness rather than permission, but you can't really do that if you're the Royal Mail. I do understand that. Um, so, yeah, they're the ones I've gone with. They're all solid choices in their way. Um, I say I don't really understand the four Tomb Raiders, but hmm, there we are. And it, it does seem very odd we haven't had Grand Theft Auto in here in some way, actually. Again, is that a right thing? I don't know, because that, that went on to be even bigger than Lara Croft, arguably, didn't it? Mind you, it hasn't had the cross-cultural impact of Lara Croft. I mean, your gran might have heard of Lara Croft, but she's probably not heard of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Anyway, if you want these, you can buy them in a post office or send off on the post office's site. They're very expensive, um, but if you don't like any of them, you can actually use them to send things through the post. So, hey, it's not like you're going to lose out ultimately except for the money you pay for them, potentially. Look, you know how this works.